In the last section, we looked at doing numerical integration using equally spaced nodes. But it's not hard to see that this is not an ideal situation in every case. For example, on this function, we have to use a fairly small h in order to resolve all these rapid oscillations on the right end. But we'd get a fine result over the left with a larger h, and that would be more efficient overall. Speaking generally, there are two very desirable features in any practical approximation method. One of those is controlling, or at least estimating, the error of the result. And the second is the ability to adapt to features of the input. It usually happens that the first is a prerequisite for the second. Let's figure out how to estimate the error in an integral calculation. Recall that Tn is the trapezoid formula using n subintervals. With three evaluations of t, we can extrapolate to two values of Simpson's formula, and then we can extrapolate one more value at sixth order. If we use the better of the Simpson values as our estimate of the integral, then the final r value should be a good estimate of how accurate the Simpson value is. So we'll call the difference between these two capital E. Now we might want to use the r value as our result, since it's supposed to be more accurate. That is allowed, but if we do that, then we would have to accept that our error estimate is probably too pessimistic. Our adaptation strategy is a common one in computer science known as divide and conquer. The idea is that you tear a problem into smaller pieces that should be easier to solve, you solve the subproblems, and then you glue them back together. In our case, the tearing step is to break the integration interval in half. Each piece should require fewer nodes to resolve than the original, so they're easier versions of the problem, and then we can just add the results together. So we have the following outline. We want to integrate f over the interval a, b. We try s on four nodes and estimate the error in it. If that's not error accurate enough, then we bisect the interval. We integrate over the two pieces separately, and then we add the results together. Note that the integration subproblems are of the same type as the original, so we can use a recursive implementation. The last thing we have to specify is what a good enough result is. It's common to use a criterion on the error estimate E that has both an absolute tolerance for when the result is close to zero, and a relative tolerance, which takes over when the result is very large. Finally, we can once again do some recycling of function evaluations in this recursive process. Initially, we're using two function evaluations to get t1, another one to get t2, and two more to get t4, and then all the extrapolated values we need. If we decide that we need better accuracy, then when we bisect the interval, we can carry down three function values with us to each of the subintervals, so that each new subinterval only needs two new function evaluations to do its thing. Here's the implementation from the book. The outer function doesn't do much besides call the inner function that's the actual recursive algorithm. This function expects to be given the three function values that are being recycled from the level above. It then does the two new f evaluations, 
and from these it calculates the three trapezoid values and the extrapolations. If the error is acceptable, the value is returned and this branch of the recursion is ended. Otherwise, it calls itself on the subproblems and adds the results. Here I have a function that varies slowly on part of the interval and then much faster on the second half of it. I'll use MATLAB's built-in integration to find an accurate value for the integral of that function. And now I'll call the adaptive integral method from the book, and I'll ask for a tolerance of about 10 to the minus 4. Since i is pretty close to 1 in magnitude, it doesn't matter whether you consider that absolute or relative. So it comes back quickly. The actual error, though, is a little bit bigger than that error tolerance we requested. So this tolerance is not a guarantee, it's just an estimate. The second output from the uh, adaptive integration is a vector of nodes that were used to compute the integral. So here you can see, as you would expect, a nice large spacing on the left half, and then it gets finer and finer and finer as you go to the right. Next I'll do an experiment. So I'll choose decreasing tolerances from 10 to the minus 4 to 10 to the minus 14th, and notice for each tolerance what the error, actual error was and what the number of nodes was. So as you can see as we decrease tolerance the error never does quite match up and be as small as the tolerance. That doesn't happen in every problem, it's problem dependent. But they do decrease pretty much in lockstep. Meanwhile the number of nodes has to increase to get more and more accurate results. If we plot the errors on a log-log scale, you see almost a linear convergence. So this is almost a pure order convergence uh, with one strange hiccup here. Now, for each value of the tolerance, it picks as, as few nodes as it can get away with to give that error. If we took that same number of nodes and then just distributed the nodes equally, what we were doing before, how does that compare? So here I'm not worried about efficiency. I just write a T and an S to do the trapezoidal rule and the Simpsons formula. And then for each of my experimental tolerances, I just evaluate the Simpson formula at the same number of nodes as the adaptive formula used. And I'll plot that for comparison. And the dashed line is perfect fourth order convergence, so naturally that's what the Simpson formula does. The adaptive formula, at least for a while, tracks that same slope, although it seems to get a little bit steeper towards the, the low end of the uh, tolerance here. But for every particular number of nodes, you see the adaptive method is about two orders of magnitude more accurate than the equally spaced method. And so even though there is some overhead for doing the recursions and all those things, depending on the integrand, the adaptive can give you a very large savings in computational time.